Well, good, good morning to everyone and welcome to this Conself webinar about uh, CFD in uh, heating, ventilation and air conditioning sector and in particular about smoke and contaminant extraction from parking lots and clean rooms. Uh, I am uh, Ruggiero Poletto and I'm talking uh, as uh, a speaker of Conself. Uh, Concept is a company based in Italy whose goal is to provide design software easy to use and accessible everywhere. Uh, most of the time our products are for uh, engineers and designers in general as the, the ones the one we're gonna see in a little bit. We offer uh, quite a few uh, services the first one in, is the CFD on cloud, the software we are going to see later. Uh, after that, there is the uh, consulting service in which everyone can assess our professionals in order to uh, work on their products and projects. Then obviously we have support both for the consulting and our web application. And we also organize ev events uh, for the community we are creating around our software and training for uh, software and for uh, design for engineers, both on-site and, and remote. This particular uh, webinar is going to be about smoke uh, and contaminant extraction from parking lots. So we, we shall visualize the results of a CFD simulation, CFD is the acronym for Computational Fluid dynamic, Dynamics, a simulation of, of a car park, and we're going to visualize the flow induced by a, a fan inside the car park. So first of all, let's start from the basic question. Why should we simulate a car park? And in particular, why should we simulate it for fire prevention? The present tutorial is based on the Italian law uh, taken from the European Commission named DM of the 9th of May 2007. And uh, according to this regulation, we can divide, let's say, uh, the uh, design process uh, of fire prevention into two main tasks. The first one has to deal with the structure where every engineer and every professional must assure that the structure of the car park in this particular case, but in general, they can resist uh, to a fire, so to the heat in particular, released by the fire during its, its process for a certain amount of time. And the second task every designer has to achieve is uh, to guarantee a safety way out for the people in case of emergency. And by safety, I mean both uh, guarantee uh, a certain level of temperature, but also a certain level of visibility. So prevent smoke to uh, stay in all the way out, the path towards the way out in particular. Here, it's important also to notice that this must be guaranteed to the people inside of the car park, for instance, but also for uh, the fire brigades who are going to come and help the people and try to stop the fire. So it is possible to identify three particular tasks before getting to the CFD simulation, also identifying the regulation I mentioned before. The first one is the identification of the fire danger. Okay. In particular, we want to define what can start, can trigger a fire, and what can burn during the fire phenomenon. It is also important to evaluate what substances can be produced during the fire, uh, the fire event. Second step every designer has to achieve is the fire scenario selection. Once identify what can burn, etc., it is important to identify where and the places and the power of the fire in, in order to uh, run the simulation in the step afterward. 
uh, by selecting these parameters, we must also consider the probability of one event to happen. And according to this uh, probability, we can somehow take into high consideration the most probable events and <clears throat> decrease uh, the consideration we can have for uh, less probable events. And obviously, the final step is the fire simulation. CFD analysis can be used in order to predict the fire and air behavior, in order to uh, guarantee safety for all the people inside of the structure. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at all the steps and uh, and the phases we identified. So in the first one, we have to answer two main questions: Where can a fire? possibly start? Where is the location? What are the materials involved? And uh, by replying, by, by answering this question, we, we will get uh, the first feedback from our analysis. Once we identified what can burn and what is, is, is actually the danger, where the danger come from, we can then uh, decide and, and analyze what do we have to protect. Obviously, we have to protect people, both the ones that are inside uh, the uh, domain, uh, inside the car park, before the fire event, but also all the people that are going to come to help, like fire brigades, as we said before. But not only people. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about industries, and I'm thinking about uh, stocking uh, dangerous substances such as explosives we have to avoid these substances to get in contact with uh, fire or any anything which is burning <coughs> so for warehouse protection of substances is very very fundamental obviously then we have to consider in phase two the fire scenario in particular the fire parameters location Power, we are going to use the acronyms HRR, heat release rate, in order to identify the power, because the fire power is not going to be constant throughout the time, but it's going to vary with time. And we're going to see later how this variation is going to be important. And obviously, it is also important to consider the chemical reaction because of the gases and the substances produced and maybe and these substances may be dangerous for people. As we said before, let's analyze uh, quickly the heat release rate. During uh, the heat release curve, it's possible to uh, detect three or four phases, uh, which are very fundamental to know where exactly we are in, in, the, in the fire lifetime. There is uh, a first phase, which is the, the, the incipient phase, it's the beginning of the fire. And then we have a second phase, which is named growth. It's the phase in which the fire has substantially started and it is starting to expand to the nearest burning substances, to the nearest flammable substances next to it. During the growth phase, the heat release rate increases with time, but this increase, increase is, is, is rather slow compared to the following uh, period of time, named flashover. In this moment, the heat produced in the growth phase out is enough to uh, automatically trigger a fire everywhere in the, play, in, in the location. So instantaneously, uh, the fire starts burning everywhere in the car park. Obviously, this phase is the most dangerous phase of every fire event and must be delayed as much as possible by using fire prevention system, such as fans and, and such as fans as those we are going to simulate uh, during the tutorial. After the flash over, there is nothing really that we can do because the fire continues at its maximal power for a certain amount of time before decaying 
And this decay is not because we are acting on it, but it's just because we finished the substances which can be burned by the fire. Okay, so the fire extinguishes itself only after it finishes resources available in the car park in particular. It is important also to note that the first phase, named growth, it's highly affectable by the materials we are dealing with. So low combustion power results in a slower uh, increases of, of the heat release rate during the early stages. So one of, obviously one of the main parameters every designer can, can assess is the material choice. Choose the right material according to the danger it's going to face. And then, obviously, we have the testing phase. In this phase, it is possible to actually use CFD software as a simulation tool in order to predict what's going to be the behavior during a fire event. But obviously, it is also possible to have experiment in the physical place where uh, the fire might happen. The advantages of simulating it via any CFD software are uh, many. And in particular, I want to stress the possibility to simulate a place before it can be constructed. So in case of negative answer from the simulation, we can actually act on the drawing and modify the car park before this car park has been officially built. Instead, during experiments, they can be conducted only after the uh, building is already in place. So this ends up being much more cost effective uh, for a uh, testing phase uh, acting on, on the simulation. Having said that, we can have a quick overview of the concept software capability in CFD simulation. Uh, let me, let me mention that our software is available on the cloud, so you don't need to download and install anything in your local machine. You don't have to buy a license or hardware to run this software, but you just have to go to our website, www.concept.com, and register and assess the web application. This can let you save up to 90% compared to most software uh, actually on the market. In Conself, we divided the uh, simulation phase into four steps. The first one is the creation of a CAT model in many formats. Then we have a meshing phase, after which uh, we have the definition of the CFD setup, and last but not least, we have the results analysis, in which, by using several tools provided by Concept, we can assess the results and, and actually verify them according to the regulation we mentioned before. Let's see all these steps by one by one, starting from the CAD interface. Concept can handle multiple uh, file format, such as STAB file, IGES file, STL file, and we can also handle multiple unit systems. Obviously, we have uh, the international unit system, but also imperial for English-speaking countries. In the meshing phase, we have two main algorithms available, hexahedral mesh and tetrahedral mesh. Both of them are uh, equipped, let's say, with the boundary layer for wall refinement. So it is possible to uh, have smaller and smaller cells as we approach the wall. It is important to stress that Concept gives a guided procedure through the surface and volume meshing, the, which helps a lot the user into the find the meshing, a fundamental part of any CFD simulation. Obviously, the CFD software is highly flexible. There are multiple flow models available in compressible flows and ideal gas, but also many turbulence models among the most common ones. 
Key epsilon, K omega SST, and spiral Almaras, just to mention a few of them. The simulation can be both steady and transient. And I also would like to, 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 to state that uh, our results are highly reliable because we use OpenFOAM, which is a software highly validated by ESI Group, an independent power. For the result analysis, we offer a ParaView, uh, a visualizer, which allows the user to interact with the domain, having slides, streamlines, profiles, and contours. So all the most common tools uh, normally used for uh, post-processing, which allows the user also to uh, validate the velocity field and the pressure field inside of the domain. But assessing concept platform is, is not just the software. There is obviously much more beyond that. We offer support available online directly on the platform 24-7. There is a wide range of test cases and tutorials available on our wiki at wiki.concept.com. There is a potential unlimited CPU power, so no problem regarding huge domains, no problem regarding high number of cells, and no problem also regarding time, because this CPU power is available 24-7. Obviously, concept of also of uh, an on-demand software development, so I suggest you to get in contact with us if you have any particular request. We will be pleased to, to listen to it and to try help you. Let's move then to the live example. First, let's have a look at a brief introduction of, of the car park simulation we're going to see. There is, uh, this is the car park, the drawing on, of the car park, in which there is a, a place uh, for a, a jet fan. This is a particular fire prevention tool which make easy uh, which increase the flow from the input, which is the ceiling window, to the output, which is the ex entrance or uh, exit ramp. Uh, in the next slide, we are going to visualize the 3D car park, in which we highlight the surfaces which are actually important for the simulation, such as the window open air surface. Uh, through this surface, we are going to see all the input flow uh, the suction flow from, for the car park. The suction flow is actually uh, triggered by the jet fan, the propulsion uh, imposed by the jet fan to the airflow, the jet fan that pushes the air towards the outlet ramp, which is the way out for the smoke and heat produced in case of fire. So let's move now to the practical uh, simulation that we can use with the software. So just give me one minute in order to uh, visualize our web application. Here it is. So this is the web application of Concept. As you can see, I'm on a normal browser that uh, for my in my case is Google Chrome and I, I simply type uh, the word concept website concept.com uh, this works uh, as a, a normal website so it is possible to register and log in here it is I press the button to log in everyone can uh, register and uh, uh, with the registration, it is basically possible to assess the two weeks free trial of the application we're going to see later on. I already have my user and password, so I can uh, look in directly to the web application. Let's just give the time to load the page, and here it is, the web app. It consists of two main pages, the dashboard that we're going to see at the end of the tutorial, uh, and then the simulation page, which helps the user in order to uh, verify what's running in the moment, at the moment and uh, uh, to create uh, new cases and check old, old ones. But as I said before, 
we have user manual and the contact support directly available inside of the application. So you just have to click one or two buttons in order to see and get in contact with us. I just want to open the user manual in order to show you uh, the very short user manual that you can uh, you have available obviously at all at every time and and you can use in order to understand how our software works but also to to tell you that you can assess in the cfd application hvac car park ventilation you can assess the this tutorial setup uh, in order for you to uh, train yourself and reproduce what uh, I, I'll do uh, now. So as I said before, the first thing we have to do is to create a new case. So let's call it webinar and, and with the date of today. So 10, 11, 15. I am creating the new case and obviously the first thing I'm asked is to upload a step file containing the geometry, which is basically the one we saw before. So I'll do that. It takes a few seconds to upload the geometry and here it is. The first, we have to follow the guided procedure in order to set up the simulation. The first thing we are asked is, what's the unity? Uh, in which we draw the file. Well, we draw it in centimeters, so just centimeter. Th then we have to decide how we want to divide the car park. Well, let's move back to the drawing we saw a minute ago. This is the what's inside of the step file, and it's easy to understand that we put colors on the surfaces in order to detect them. So we need to specify, we want the file to be divided by color. We move to the next section and we are asked whether we want an internal flow or external ones. Since we are here to analyze the flow inside a car park, it's obvious that we want an internal flow and we submit the job. We confirm the submission and here it is. The job starts running in background and we have a progress on what's going on. In this moment, we are going to analyze the geometry with the input data we specify. For uh, time reason, let's move to the same case I had already run previously for you and let's analyze directly the results of what we have done so far. Here it is. By going to the mesh 2D step, I can actually lock, I can actually turn on the geometry step, uh, exactly the one we have run a few seconds ago, and visualize the car park. Here it is. At this moment, we are requested to input the parameter for the uh, surface meshing. Most of the time, these parameters have to deal with the mesh uniformity and uh, the maximum element size we want on that particular surface. In order to visualize the, all the boundaries we defined according to the colors, here it is. In, we have this tool which allows us to visualize one by one the, sur the, the surfaces. And it, here it is. I am now having a look at the red surface, which is the uh, ramp inlet. So in here, I select the, the red surface and I can select the uniformity level to be 70 and the max element size to be 0 0.1 meters. As a surface mesh, we want to increase the resolution next to the uh, jet fan. So we have to select the jet fan surfaces, which, if I'm not wrong, they're going to be the green and the gold. If I select both of them, I click apply, and this is the inlet and outlet of the jet fans. 
and I want to increase the mesh resolution on them. So I just select them also on the drop down menu on the left hand side and I put 0 0.01 meters on both of them. So both on the green and on the gold. In this way, I have 10 times higher resolution compared to other locations. So now I should submit my job confirm the submission, and once it's finished, I can actually assess what's been done. I skip this for timing reason, and I move to Mesh 3D. I directly visualize the results. One second only. It's loading. Here it is. It seems the very same picture, but it is not. In fact, now I can turn on the surface mesh and visualize it with a, a graphical feedback, let's say. So I click on representation, surface with edges, and then I click apply. Here it is. Now it's colored. Obviously, the elements are very, very small, and I need to zoom in in order to visualize them. Here it is. As I zoom in, these are the elements. As you can see now, we are inside the car park. One second. And what we can see is that inside of the car park, there is nothing really inside. This is something we have to avoid and we have to fill with the, the, the following phase, which is Mesh 3D, in which we are going to define how we want to fill this volume inside the car park with the geometrical elements. There are two main algorithms available, hexahedral and tetrahedral, and uh, an element size to define. Before moving on, let's move back to the manual and let's visualize how these options can affect, let's say, our, our, our mesh. This is a, a, a small preview of how an hexahedral mesh looks like how a tetrahedral mesh looks like. Hexahedral is based composed by square or rectangular, while a tetrahedral mesh is composed by tetrahedral, like triangles. Okay, so the first selection is whether we want the mesh made by squares or triangles. And then we are also asked to define a wall refinement, how small we want the cell to be as we approach the wall. Hexahedral and tetrahedral mesh, they have two different behaviors. And here they are visualized very, very well. We have the wall cell high and the lightest number, while we have a certain number of prismatic cells as we approach the wall for the tetrahedral cell, uh, meshing algorithm. So for the present simulation, we select tetrahedral mesh with boundary layer. We leave the default value for mesh element size and we move to the boundary treatment. It's the place where we have to select the lightest number and the first cell height, as we saw in the previous picture. We are happy with the default values, and once again, we click Submit in order to see what's going to happen inside of the, of the domain. For timing reason, we skip the submission phase, and we move directly to the CFD setup. First of all, we want to visualize the mesh. So let's turn it on. It takes a few seconds in order to visualize the mesh, which is made by millions of elements, probably. So this is the mesh. Once again, is the usual car park. And we want to see what's inside of it. In order to do that, we need to make a clip. Uh, to visualize what's inside of it. So we click on this plus icon and we select Slice. We click Apply. We select once again uh, Surface with Edges in order to visualize all the edges inside of it. And, and we move closer to the slide. Here it is. Now we can actually see that the mesh is not just the surface of the car park, but it is also inside of the car park. 
And we can also visualize that we choose to have a higher refinement closer to the wall and a slightly slow, as uh, bigger refinement, uh, smaller refinement inside of the, do the fluid domain. It is possible now to uh, choose all the physical model and set up the real CFD simulation. Obviously, we have to define the density model in compressible flow. We want just to simulate air at low speed. And the turbulence model, we prefer spalar tamaras for this type of simulation. Then we are asked to insert a certain number of parameters, such as the fluid density. In this case, it's F, so 1.225 kilos uh, over uh, cubed meters. We define a pressure. The dynamic viscosity, once again, is, it's a parameter of, of the flow. And in this particular case, we just leave the default value, which refers to air, and the spalart almonds viscosity. It's, it's, this parameter refers to turbulence. We can move them to the boundary condition. In this situation, once again, we have to specify all the boundaries, like uh, we want to specify where is the inlet, where is the outlet, where actually the, uh, out, the, the atmospheric pressure acts, and so on and so forth. Okay, so moving one by one on all this data, we start from the jet fan inlet. I selected the gold surface, so I need to go to gold. This is the gold surface. In here, I expect the jet fan to produce a 10 meters per second velocity in X direction, so normal to the surface. N nothing else in all the other directions. And I am also asked to specify the spalart almaras value. Once again, we go to the manual and we go to the CFD section and we see that for inlet, uh, the manuals suggests a value which is square root of three halves u times i times l, where u is the inlet velocity magnitude, i is the turbulence intensity, 5%, and L is the diameter of the surface. In our case, I already made a calculation, it's 0 0.18. We select then the other surface, the green three, the other surface of the jet fan, this time the outlet, and we apply the same, the same parameter, so minus 10 and the value for the spalar almaras is 0 0.18. We have now to specify the navy blue surface. What is this navy blue? Oh, it's the window opening on top of the car park. On this window, we only have atmospheric pressure acting. So we select value and we specify 1,100, uh, 1,125 Pascal. We specify that since we are dealing with outlet or inlet, the velocity gradient must be zero, and the same for the spalart almaras value. Exactly the same setup goes to the red four zone. The red zone, which is obviously the inlet ramp. So red, value for pressure, 101325. Velocity specified as gradient. And the same type of specification for spalar talmaras. Last but not, not least, we have the yellow zone. So let's visualize what's yellow. The yellow zone represents all the walls uh, of the car park. So we have to spe specify a wall boundary condition. Once again, this condition can be found on our manual and it is basically represented by the default values. 
We move then to the very last uh, section in which we have to specify the time evolution, whether we want a transient or a steady flow, the number of iteration and uh, the output frequency. The, uh, every how many time steps, how many iteration we want to intercore from uh, one visualization to another. These parameters are fundamentals in order to guarantee the correct resolution of the flow and uh, the correct convergence of, of the spread. We can run the simulation and according to the parameters we put, uh, basically we can estimate uh, uh, a total duration of the simulation of few hours, three or four maybe. So totally uh, unfit, unsuitable with the uh, time of this tutorial. So let's move directly to the results and uh, let's start visualizing the flow. So here it is, the car park. Let's zoom a little bit. Let's move to the final time step. And let's start looking inside of it in order to visualize the flow inside of the car park. So first of all, as we did before, I'm going to create a slice uh, to visualize the flow velocity inside of the car park. This slice now is going to be not normal on X, but normal in Y direction. And I also want to specify the coordinate of this slide. So I click apply, here it is. I don't know whether you can actually see it, but there is this light blue area inside of it, which actually underlines higher velocity. In order to visualize even more the velocity, let's turn on the legend, the legend bar, and let's reduce the velocity range to 0.3. Oh, here it is. We can actually see that there is quite a huge velocity flow inside of the car park. But I want also now to visualize where is this slice located inside of the car park. So I turn on the system file, the base file, and for here, I want to turn on the transparency. So I set it to 0.1. And here it is. I can actually understand much better where is this slice located inside of the car park. Moving forward, I now want also to visualize the streamlines. So the flow lines inside of the car park in order to have a better visualization. So I select Stream Tracer this time. So plus icon, Stream Tracer. And uh, I have to define how I want to color them. Once again, I want them to be colored according to the velocity. We have to define where to start them from, to the velocity field. And we have to define where is the source point of them. So having specified these parameters, once again, I reduce the velocity range to uh, 0.3. I turn on the car park and here it is. I can actually now understand that the flow gets in from the stop window, goes towards the inlet, uh, the outlet ramp, actually involves some of the car boxes in this area, but uh, I can see that two main vortexes are created one on the right-hand side and one on the left-hand side of the jet fans. These are induced by the jet fan propulsion to the flow. Obviously, now I want to download these results, and it is obviously possible. I click on this Save icon. I select the resolution. I capture the image, and by right-clicking on it, I can save in my local PC. So with this, basically, I can consider this part of the tutorial finished, but I just want to show you the dashboard because now we are ready to understand that we have some statistics on which steps are performed the most, 
we have some more data about the credits uh, we used, so we keep under control all the costs involved with the concept platform, and we also have these credits divided according to the simulation. So it is also possible to know where we are expanding the most and uh, quite a few uh, financial feedback as well. With this, uh, I consider uh, finish the presentation of concept uh, web application and, and we can move on to uh, see the presentation, the final slides of the presentation. So, first of all, I invite you all to make questions to us. This is the, the question part of the webinar. We, we like a lot of interaction with our users, so I invite you to make us questions. In order to do so, just click on the uh, small squares button on the top right of your web pages and then click on question and answer. And uh, I will reply to most of the questions you can make. Sorry. So if there is any question, I am uh, available with uh, the answer. One second. All right. I have uh, two or three questions at the moment. I start answering, uh, but uh, don't feel uh, uh, don't feel shy and make as many as you want. So the first one: Are there specific requirements for my personal equipment to use the application? No, not really. There are no specific requirements. Uh, the application runs on cloud, so on a software provided by software, by Conself. Also, the hardware is provided by us. You only need a, a web connection in order to interact with the application, and obviously, you also need the CAD files. But uh, in general, one can run the simulation also on, on uh, iPad and, and laptops with, with no specific hardware requirements. Another question is, uh, what happens if internet connection goes down and I have uh, some simulation running? Well, uh, the application is uh, uh, made uh, right for this reason, so uh, the simulation keeps running. Everything runs in background and it is possible, obviously, to log off and do something else. Meanwhile, the CFD uh, software does the job for you. All right. Uh, probably this question is because it's a web-based application. So do we have to use a specific browser or uh, OS operating system? No, really. We have already tested the application in the most popular browsers, such as Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox, and Google Chrome. And obviously, we are totally independent on the application of the operating system. So Windows, Linux, Mac OS, or any other, uh, feel free uh, to log on and just use the application. Oh, another one is about co-working and, and sharing uh, uh, the work. Can different people log in with the same account? Uh, yes, they can. Uh, they, they, they obviously ha uh, have to share the password, but in this way, it is possible to create a, a company account and assess our services uh, within the same, the same billing, the same account. Obviously, we offer uh, technical support for new customers. This is another question. Uh, we both uh, at early stages for registration, but also during the CFD simulations. If you have any question, feel free to answer, to ask us. Uh, the, the easiest way to get in contact with us is, is through our website. Uh, but obviously, as we saw earlier, it is possible also to contact the support directly in the web application. 
Uh, another uh, question I've just received is, is it possible to simulate gas or toxics inside the airflow? Yes, uh, it is possible. Uh, in, we didn't show in this tutorial. We have more advanced flow models, which allows to simulate uh, uh, dispersions inside of the fluid. So in particular for uh, fire simulation, it is possible to simulate CO dispersion or any other temperature or any other uh, uh, type of flow. At the moment, it is currently not possible to uh, simulate the chemical reaction, but uh, if we get enough uh, requests from you uh, and from uh, you all the customers, we can uh, uh, thinking about a custom develop uh, in order to answer or to tackle this issue. Uh, another question is about the accuracy of the software. As I said before, we use OpenFOAM, so highly uh, high accuracy level is, is uh, actually uh, reached. Uh, we can uh, provide you with validation test cases uh, directly from our wiki at wiki.concept.com. And it, it is also possible to uh, have uh, validation data provided by uh, other groups, such as a group, which is the company which is currently developing uh, OpenFOAM. It is obviously possible to run uh, two simulations at the same time. Uh, the, simu the cost per simulation is totally unchanged. Uh, what obviously changes is that we paid uh, the same amount twice, one for the first simulation and one for the second simulation. Another question regards heat sources inside of the car room. All right, for the moment, we have uh, heat sources can be analyzed through boundaries, so it is possible to apply uh, a temperature, a fixed temperature, or a heat flux at the, at the boundaries. Uh, once again, if we get enough requests, we can also think about implementing volume sources, uh, both uh, to constrain temperature or to uh, impose uh, heat flow. But anyway, uh, at the moment with the boundaries, it is definitely possible to uh, reproduce heat sources, so heat flows and fixed temperature as well. Once again, I, I just like, would like to mention that it is possible to uh, analyze uh, also different industrial context. In this tutorial, we, uh, we saw the application in the ventilation industry. It is possible also to apply heat flow, for instance, as we said before, but also pumps. So analyze also the pumps. It is also possible to analyze in the oil and gas sector the uh, corrosions velocity, uh, which may be, may happen to the walls. I don't have particular questions at the moment. Let's just give, I, I'm going to give you a few more seconds, a few more minutes probably, in order to make some more. And uh, uh, I take advantage of uh, this moment in order to uh, invite you to visit our website and to contact us through our email or through our socials. We are currently available in basically all the socials. I would like also to particularly mention YouTube, on which we are going to put this webinar, uh, a record of this webinar after the end, uh, which is going to be released basically to all the community. So follow our channel also to uh, have indirect uh, update about our future webinars. No more questions uh, from the audience. So I take advantage. I really thank you all for listening, uh, for the nice interaction we had. I hope you had a great experience with us. I hope you are happy. We are uh, pleased to welcome all your feedbacks. So I invite you to visit the console website and apply to all the other webinars. Have a good day, and for some of you, good lunch. Bye.